Atmex is the proud sponsor of the Silver Picker YouTube channel. And Whatnot is the proud sponsor of today's video. Thank you both for your support. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here, and today's video is one that I am super pumped for because, as you saw from the title, we are up to round four in my mystery coin grab egg unboxing extravaganza bonanza competition with Christian from Treasure Town. Whew, that is a mouthful, but if you've missed the last few episodes, you definitely gotta check them out. The links are below. But essentially, what I'm doing is I am competing head-to-head -head with Christian from Treasure Town in which we are opening, unboxing mystery coin grab eggs from all across different sellers on Instagram to see who wins in terms of value, both in the specific grab bag and, of course, in the competition at large. And what we're doing is we are opening them up and seeing whether or not the value exceeds falls short or breaks even with the amount that we spent on the grab bag. You can check out the standings over here, and as you can see, I was doing really well in the first two grab bags, and then Christian had an insane grab bag the last time, and now he is actually winning the overall competition by $25. But I'm feeling really good about this grab bag, which is a $60 grab bag from Chantilly Coin Company on Instagram, and it feels chock full of coins. I mean, listen to this. I hear loose coins, I hear big things, I feel a lot of good stuff in here, and I am excited. So, as I always say, enough of the jibber jabber, let's get cracking and check out what's inside this $60 grab bag. $60, let's get cracking. Oh boy, whoa. Oh, doggy. All right, we're gonna go one by one on these because I see a whole lot of cool stuff in here. All right, we'll start off with the big boy. Ooh, starting off strong. A 2004 silver proof set. Not bad, that's chunky silver right there. Hey, what is this? Ooh, I'll, I'll say that for a second. There are surprises on surprises on surprises in here. Check this out, all right. Uh, what is that? That is not what I was hoping for. That is disappointing. As you can see, there are holes in here that are missing coins, and these are all, of course, the silver coins. And I just want to take a second, because that is very disappointing and not what you want to see in a grab bag. That is what I call feel-bad contents. And what I mean by that is, like, there's nothing wrong with these coins. Like, if I got a Sacagawea proof, a proof cent, or proof nickels in 2x2s, I would be like, all right, nice coins, not bad. Not what I collect, but not bad. But when you see this, and you get your hopes up, and you get excited that you're going to have silver coins, and then you open it up, and it's just sort of like the leftovers, it feels kind of just like junk. And that is a disappointing experience, right? Like, if I wanted to spend $60 on, you know, great coins and get specific coins I wanted, I would just buy the coins that I'm interested in. The whole reason that I would get a grab bag is because, you know, you get the fun of it. And it's not fun if you feel bad when you open it. So that's a little disappointing, um, I gotta say. Uh, all right, this is a Confederate States of America $20 bill, and it's a miniature. I believe that back in like the 1950s or 60s, they had trading cards from the Civil War, and they had these miniature dollars in there. I believe that's what this is. I'll do a little bit more research. You'll see on screen if there's uh, anything uh, different or interesting about that, but it's still pretty cool. All right, I got a lot of stuff in here. Ooh, hey, that is, whoa, that is not a feel-bad coin. That is fantastic. All right, Chantilly Coin Company, you're, uh, you're getting back in my good graces. This is a 1963 PCGS Proof 67 Deep Cameo Silver Quarter. Holy moly, this is like a $50 coin. Okay, in a $60 grab bag, having a $50 coin as sort of like the anchor coin is already incredible. Um, I still think like, you know, strategy-wise, uh, you know, th this company should not have put these in like this. I think you should have taken them out, put them in two by twos and included them like that and just tossed these plastic things because, you know, it's just more about the presentation. But anyway, I won't harp on that anymore because this is fantastic. Um, you know, with a $50 coin, we definitely, whatever is in there, we definitely got $10 worth. So I'm sure we, we made our value, which is fantastic. Now, this is an awesome coin. It doesn't fit in any of my collections, uh, so I will actually be giving this away to one of you guys watching. Now, how am I gonna do that? Well, I will do it on my next Whatnot auction. Now, if you don't know what Whatnot is, Whatnot is an incredible live auction platform in which the bidders and sellers can interact in real time, just making a way, way more fun and richer 
uh, buying and selling experience. And I did my first whatnot auction last month and it was a blast. I sold a whole bunch of coins, people got incredible deals, and I gave away over $250 worth of coins for free in giveaways. And in order to participate, you do need to join Whatnot. It, of course, is absolutely free. And on top of that, if you use my link in the description box below, that's whatnot.com slash invite slash silver picker, you will get $10 in credit to use on whatever you want on Whatnot. That means you can buy $10 worth of stuff for free, meaning you want one or two raw silver quarters, yeah, you can get those for free. So use my link, get your $10, and when you sign up using my link, guess what? I get $10 as well. So you scratch my back, I scratch yours, and all that good stuff. So my next WhatNot auction will be in September, exact dates to be determined, but you definitely wanna sign up now and check out all the other great sellers on there as well and I'll be giving this away to one lucky participant in my next WhatNot auction. So who knows, maybe I'll be selling other stuff here as well. All right, next up, we got ourselves another graded coin. Okay, this looks like it's kind of a BS holder though, MS65, yeah, I'm sure, 2001. Um, oh, it's PCI. Okay, actually, I take that back. PCI is not a BS grading company. In fact, ironically, they are said to be even more strict graders than PCGS and NGC. So an MS65 from PCI is truly an MS65. Um, I don't really collect modern coins like this, this 2001, so I will probably either be selling this or giving it away as well in my next WhatNot auction. Um, but still, that's a cool coin. All right, Mr. Chantilly, you are, uh, you are getting back in my good graces. Let's see what else we got. We got a bunch of loose uh, coins over here. We've got what looks like a bunch of pennies. Oh, they're mostly, oh, okay, hold on. I'll put this one. Ooh, this one's nice. Let's look at this first. Okay, we've got ourselves, it looks like a proof penny from 1959. It's got incredible toning on it. Look at that. It's got rainbow toning, all sorts of beautiful purples and blues. That is really, really nice. Wow, that is spectacular, actually. Really nice. And it looks like the rest are various Canadian coins from the 50s and 60s. Um, nothing too crazy there. Let's see what we've got on the reverses. Okay, okay, we've got a couple of the 1967 commemoratives. Um, otherwise, nothing too crazy, but you know, add these sort of to that you know box of old Canadian pennies that I have, and eventually I'll do something with those. Next up, we've got ourselves. This is weird. Huh, this is interesting. Okay, this is a two cent coin from the US, so it's obsolete currency. I love obsolete currency. Two cent coins, three cent silvers, three cent nickels, 20 cent coins, I love them. This one was used as uh, target practice. You can see that it actually has this bullet uh, dent in there. Uh, it's pretty common. People used to use uh, coins and they still do as target practice. I wish they would have used, you know, a modern penny or something instead of this nice two cent coin. Not really worth much, but an interesting novelty. Next up, we've got a 1949 New Caledonia Frank. One year type, MS70, $7. Now, You'll see over here if this truly is a $7 coin. Uh, you know, I would never deign to suggest that a coin is MS70 when it's raw, but you know, people do that, of course. Uh, still an interesting coin. It feels like it's aluminum. Um, I'm not a collector of, of these types of coins, but still, if you are the kind of person that wants to get a coin from every issuing country in the world, like Treasure Town, actually, then that might be something you're interested in. We've got ourselves a 1967 large penny. I love the large pennies, but I usually like the older ones. Speaking of pennies, next one up is also a penny. This is a lucky penny. It's a 1920, it looks like. Yep, 1920. And they used to make these, like, also, I think, in the 1940s and 50s. And, you know, they put this in. People would carry it around as a good luck charm. All right, we got ourselves another penny, it looks like. Uh, no, this is a Benjamin Franklin Memorial Common Token Souvenir. All right. Interesting, nothing special, but interesting. Oh, I do see actually in the box two more pennies. We've got this Canadian 1966 BU reverse proof. This is really nice, wow. The Canada Mint really, really knows what they're doing with coins. These are incredible. Wow, really, really nice. Uh, this might be saved in my uh, you know, box of treasures for a future typeset. I am working on a Canadian typeset, but the album does not have space for modern coins, but 
eventually if I can get my hands on an album that has you know room for moderns, I will add that. And the last penny, or I should say with the last penny I can see uh, in the box, is a Flying Eagle scent. And that is really nice. It's no date, unfortunately. You can't really see that. So that's definitely will decrease the value. But these are of my favorite one cent coins from the US. Uh, they had a really, really short run. I think they were the first small size scent. Uh, these were replaced by the Indian head scent later on. Um, but, you know, really, really a cool set. I don't remember the reason why they discontinued them, but I really do like them. All right, we've got ourselves, a, looks like a newspaper with some coin stuff. Looks old, what is this? Oh, this is really cool. Uh, from the Washington Post, February 4th, 1980. It is one of those coin buying ads. You see these all the time, but this is really cool because it's so old. Buying US silver coins dated before 1965. Dimes $1.60 each, quarters $4 each, and halves $8 each. This is actually incredible. These are like pretty close to the same price as they are today, except Inflation has gone up, so these are worth even more. So they were paying even more back then for these coins. Uh, that is incredible. Really, really interesting. You can pause the screen if you want to uh, review this a little bit more. Let's see if there's anything interesting on the back. Nothing in particular, okay. This isn't worth anything, but this is really, really cool. I might save this as a gift for one of my Patreon patrons that is into uh, numismatic history. Um, all right, next up, we've got ourselves, oh, uh, okay, never mind. I'm not getting overly excited. This is definitely a reproduction. Yes, definitely a reproduction. Uh, this would be worth hundreds of dollars. So, um, yeah, it's made out of cardboard. Um, this is also, I have to say, kind of like a feel bad thing. Uh, you know, uh, I guess strategically, I wouldn't have put this in the grab bag either. Um, it's very similar to this feeling where it's like you see something, get excited, and then you get let down. And that is not a good experience for a grab bag. All right, we've got a bunch more paper items. Let's see if we can run through these. All right, we got a first day of issue, 100th anniversary of the Smithsonian Institute. We get these a lot, and I usually give them to my dad because he's a stamp guy. All right, we've got ourselves, what do we have over here? These look like all the same. Uh, we've got ourselves the State Exchange Bank of Randall, the Randall National Bank, and we've got a Randall National Bank. These are from 1927, or 1936, 1937, and 1906. These look like, I guess some kind of like checks or something. I'm not exactly sure, but oh, that's really cool. I love old stamps. I love old stamps, like this, like rubber stamps. Very cool. So I guess maybe the seller bought a collection from Kansas. That's pretty cool, actually. Maybe some of these are uh, we've got more first day of issue. This one is uh, 100th anniversary of the medical, American Medical Association, the AMA. We've got ourselves, okay, another one of these, Traders National Bank. This one is from, I don't see a date on there. Ah, October 1st, 1923. That's pretty cool. Oh, oh, that is really, really cool. Really cool. I don't collect these, but it's super cool. I'll probably package these together as a lot in my whatnot auction. First day of issue, this one's 150th anniversary of the Mississippi Territory. All these first day covers will go to my dad because he collects stamps and he sells stamps and knows all about stamps. What are these? Bureau of the Mint. Oh, I know what these are. These are like the little tabs that come in uncirculated set, uh, sets from like, I think like the 60s and 70s. Um, they're not really worth anything. Um, but interesting addition. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think I would just say that to the seller, um, it's a great grab bag. Like, I have no complaints in terms of the value, right? Like, you know, most grab bags don't even get you close to the value that, you know, is allegedly in there. And, you know, you, sir, are for sure a legit grab bag seller. And if you're watching the video, like, I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Uh, just some advice, I would say, like, Less is more, right? Like if you didn't include these, didn't include this, and didn't include this, I think I would actually like the grab bag better than having had included those, even though there's technically a value to them, I guess, to some degree. It's just, again, I keep calling it like feel bad stuff, and it definitely is not uh, ideal to include. So I would say just advice for the future, as somebody who knows a lot about coin grab bags, I've opened up a lot of coin grab bags, uh, so I know a thing or two, I would just say, you know, avoid those. All right, we got a little collection of uh, sales tax tokens. We've got Alabama, 
We've got, this one is from Oklahoma, that's cool. Uh, these ones are like ceramic, these ones are aluminum. Colorado, uh, where is this one from? Another Oklahoma, and another Oklahoma. And this one is really interesting, this one's paper. Sales tax token, I've never seen that before. That is really, really cool. I also like the variety on these. I usually get just the same ones, uh, usually from Missouri. Um, so that's really cool. And it looks like we've got our last coin, our absolute last coin in the grab bag. Is it good? Is it good? It is great. Oh my God. Another PCGS MS67 1973S Silver Eisenhower. That is really, really nice. This is amazing for a typeset. If you are a typeset collector and you don't collect in the albums, I collect in the albums, but if you're a typeset collector and you collect in uh, PCGS or NGC holders or any slabs, this is really nice. MS67, that is super, super nice. That is a valuable coin and it's the silver variety. That is amazing. This was a phenomenal, phenomenal grab bag and it definitely gets me closer to catching up with Christian from Treasure Town. Um, I really, really like this grab bag. I know I've been, I was pretty negative about it at the beginning and I was critical of it. I would say I'm critical of it in terms of the design, but not at all in terms of the value. This was an incredible grab bag. I had so much fun. If you want to see whether or not I beat Christian in this round, you got to go check out his channel. The links are below. You definitely want to watch it. This has been round four. You can see the standings right now. I have definitely come back a little bit and hopefully come back enough to overtake him and see what happens in round five. So anyway, I had a lot of fun with this video. If you are new here and you've not yet hit that subscribe button, well, now's the time hit that big old red subscribe button. And everybody watching, do me the ultimate YouTube solid and hit that like button. It takes you literally one second. By the time I finish this sentence, you could have done it and you should do it and you don't know how much it helps. It helps so much. Anyway, we've got a lot more videos in this series coming down the pike and you gotta stay tuned because I am going to kick Christian's butt but I'm going to win this contest and we will announce very soon what the punishment for the loser will be and the prize for the winner. So I hope you enjoyed the video. A lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike. So stay tuned and until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. You guys are amazing. I cannot thank you enough. If you are not yet a patron but want to support the channel and become part of the greatest coin collecting community on the internet, the links are below and I can't wait to meet you personally in our private Patreon-only Discord server server.